Hello everyone, I'm Forum BX257, your friendly neighborhood G.I. Joe reviewer, and this is my channel update video for 2021. Now the channel update video will include my G.I. Joe toy hauls for the year, as well as some new ideas for how to do some reviews outside of the normal G.I. Joe toy review formats that I do, and of course some channel news. Well, the channel news is actually very easy to get out of the way because there's only two prominent things. The first is, of course, the big one. I've switched from 720p to 1080p HD. Now, even though I do pride myself on having some very clear uh, video of the toys and the stuff that I'm reviewing, I, I just wanted to up that to 1080p actually for quite a while. But the other thing is that I'm, I'm sort of contemplating stopping my Facebook um, page. Um, honestly, I've, I haven't been really very, uh, very confident with Facebook in general as a, as a company. But ever since they had switched over uh, formats, like almost like last year, I have not been uh, happy with how to put my um, photographs and uh, any type of uh, messages on there. The one thing I do want to apologize is for the um, not only the lateness of this update video, but of course the lack of videos for last year. Obviously, um, some people handled 2020 better than others. Um, I did not, but when I do have the time to make them right, and if that means that I'm not making as many, then I do apologize, but that's just the way it's going to be until things just life gets back to normal. Now on to my toy haul. This is actually part of a haul of battle copters, which I started last year, and I only managed to complete it this year. Last year I had Ace, but I didn't have his 1992 battle copter. Now I do. And for the other 1992 figure, the Cobra version, I had the battle copter, but not the Heli Viper pilot, which goes with it, and now I do. So now all I'm left with is the complete battle copters from 1991 and 1992, and I have to wonder how I'm going to review them, whether I'm going to separate them from uh, one video being G.I. Joe, another video being the Cobra ones, or whether just to have both the 91s and 92s as separate videos, or whether to combine all of them into one giant video, which is something that I'm kind of leaning towards. Believe it or not, out of the entire toy haul, those balcopters were the only things which I have as 100% complete and new to show to you. All the other toys which I'm going to be showing during this toy haul are actually incomplete, so it will actually take me kind of a while to complete them in order for me to review them. However, one thing which uh, I have been really interested in picking up is, is kind of like ancillary G.I. Joe stuff, like these G.I. Joe comic books. So I went out of my way to pick up almost the entire rest of the series. Um, Blackthorn Publishing went from 1987 to 1989. Uh, they went out of business around 1989. So the last issue, I have like one through five in annual number one, but there's also an issue number six, which is the last G.I. Joe issue. And it's really hard to find because, well, like I said, that's when Blackthorn Publishing kind of went out of business at that point. So I'm actually quite I'm actually quite interested in reviewing these because I do feel that they they sort of belong in that same G.I. Joe era, which I had reviewed before. Obviously, as a 3D comic book, uh, the pages kind of look like this. And I'm not sure quite how that's uh, going to scan. Honestly, without the 3D glasses, this is kind of headache inducing. But um, I'm sure when I scan it, I'll probably just make the whole thing like black and white or something like that and uh, not put in the uh, 3D effect. As for the toys itself, this is a 1990 uh, Cobra Rage, which is something which I've wanted for a very long time. Uh, every time I see one on the aftermarket, at least in Canada, it's always missing something. And, uh, you know, it's just on the bottom of my list because I don't want those extra I don't want to pick up those extra pieces. And you can imagine this being incomplete. Well, guess what's missing on this thing? And take a look at even more non-toy related G.I. Joe stuff is my full collection of 1991 Impel trading cards. Now this is actually something which I thought I had completed a long time ago. And then I, uh, I went to make like a little archive here, like a handwritten archive, and realized that I actually do have just like a couple, it was like three or four that were actually duplicates and I had missing. So 
Um, I finally completed this. It's like 190, oh, well, it's 200 cards. Really, it, it, these are very cheap and very easy to find on the aftermarket. Thing, this will actually make a fairly interesting, I think a, a fairly interesting vlog. Maybe not like a, a full on uh, review, but let, maybe like a vlog, which I'll talk about these cards. Anyway, another item which uh, is not complete, and I could, could probably probably tell who why this thing isn't complete because this is a 1989 His Tank 2, which is another item which I really really wanted for a very long time, but uh, I have yet to find a figure for this thing. Actually, I have found a figure, but they're always in such bad condition, so I, I generally don't pick them up, but. I might be forced to pick up a figure and, I don't know, maybe like restore it or paint it up or something like that uh, to at least make it presentable for a, a review. Another thing which I, I was really glad of picking a particular example up is because I, I'm not sure if it really comes out on camera, but this thing is it's kind of a weird grayish blue. It was really hard finding a His Tank 2, at least here in Canada, which hasn't been discolored. One of the few non-G.I. Joe things which I still actively collect are these Canadian catalogs from old Canadian catalog stores like Consumers Distributing. Um, well, actually, Consumers Distributing was in the U.S. for a very brief amount of time, but they're mostly known as a Canadian catalog store. And uh, these ones I actively collect, and they actually do sort of overlap my G.I. Joe collection, obviously, because I do collect the um, late 70s to very late 80s, so that's... That's still within the wheelhouse of G.I. Joe, obviously. And uh, there are some very interesting things in here. This particular one, obviously from Consumers Distributing. As you would expect, this one has an ad for the Black Bobat, which is exclusive to Canada, exclusive to Consumers Distributing. And I was actually watching uh, a Plaid Stallions video. Uh, Plaid Stallions is actually a podcast, which is their... Uh, uh, sort of their, their their main thing, but they actually have a YouTube channel called Brick Mantooth, and they actually uh, went through a video explaining the um, one of their Mego catalogs or something like that. And I, I was really fascinated. I thought I actually have some very rare catalogs from Canada, and you don't usually see a lot of a lot of the um, a lot of images, and you certainly don't hear a lot of people actually talking about their experiences along with those images because I mean, well, I mean, I live this life. So I think this would also make a very good vlog perhaps in the future. And of course we have a 1990 Cobra Hurricane. So again, not complete. The actual toy is complete, but once again, just like the His Tank, I don't have the figure. The figure actually goes for quite a bit of money. Um, I've actually found it a number of times, so uh, it, it's not really that hard to find. As a matter of fact, I, I actually find the um, the track Viper from the His Tank to be harder to find than the Vapor figure for this. But honestly, people want a, a lot of money, and sometimes the condition just isn't there for me to drop down that kind of cash. But I think I will have to swallow that bullet because I really like this this jet. Of course. Me being me, I like a lot of the G.I. Joe jets. They're usually quite big. They're quite interesting engineering. And this thing is no different. You would think that something from 1990 would be like cheap or just full of really bad gimmicks. It's not. This thing is like, it's like an updated Rattler. It's really cool. Of course, one of the things which really inspired me to buy this particular example is because once again we have that blue plastic which Hasbro likes to use and for some strange reason really discolors fairly easily so it was fairly hard to find an example which is this bright blue and hasn't turned like yellowish green. Whoops well I guess I kind of misspoke when I said that the Balcopters were the only G.I. Joe toys which I picked up which are 100% complete now because well I actually picked up these well not those. I've already shown and reviewed these. These are the 1983 Pack Rats. They uh, each individually came in their own little boxes. This is what I've picked up. The mail away versions of those Pack Rats. Now I don't really plan on doing a review of these because well other than the color they're exactly the same as the retail version so it doesn't really matter. I think my the video that I have up currently on YouTube is good enough for that. Even though it might be quite old. So what I picked up here 
or the three pack rats, and they were, uh, as, as a mail away, they were sold as a set of three rather than individually. And as you can see, I just pick up the uh, missile launcher. You can see on the on the right is the retail version, slightly light green. And on the left, the mail away version, which is slightly dark green. And that's really the only change. None of the other things like the um, the dark gray or even the red plastic is uh, it's, it looks fairly the same to me. It's just the green which has changed. Uh, I kind of think that these dark green ones may have originated in the um, as a UK overstock because they look the dark green is very much in keeping with the um, the UK Action Force versions of GI Joe toys. I actually got this for a very low price because, well, I don't think he knew exactly what these were when he uh, when he sold them. And honestly, even if he did, I don't think he would have sold them for very much more than what the um, the original 1983 pack rats would have been because they're really not that uh, they're really not that popular, honestly. So a lot of people don't really care for the variants. And here's the French side of the English and French ad for it. You can see the. Uh, Pack rats sold as three. And here is what I was talking about on the bottom of the instructions. Not only does it have the 83 date, but it has this right in the corner, 1288, meaning that this was made in the latter half of 1988 for 1989 distribution, which is where this uh, catalog comes from. I talked about these way back in my 2020 update video about upcoming die-cast versions of the vehicles and figures from Jada Toys. Now I was really looking forward to the vehicles and I actually ordered them. Not so much the figures, but I think I've changed my mind a little bit on them. Now one thing that I had ordered them, but unfortunately that didn't happen because, well, 2020 happened and the post office was kind of unreliable at that point so my order was cancelled and I forgot to reorder them. I'm going to be doing that now so at least I will get them in hand but I, I really do want to encourage the, you know, the buying of these die cast vehicles because I hope that Jada Toys will make more on the line. One idea for a video which I planned on making for winter of 2020 or the beginning of 2021 because that's when I usually make some arctic or winter uh, themed videos is a sort of repair modification of my 1985 Snowcat. Now this is my original one which has like a broken uh, missile missile rack here on the back. back. It, almost all of these Snowcat missile boxes are all, all broken at the hinge here. So I thought of a really good way of repairing that. But then I got this in like a, uh, a junk lot of G.I. Joe vehicles and figures, and it has a perfect missile box. I don't know how this thing survived, seeing as the rest of this thing is kind of junky, but it did. And I thought, you know what, I should transfer this box over to that one and vice versa and actually work on this one. But if I have an original one, which is in fairly good condition, what would I do with this one? And I thought, you know what? Let's let's like actually modify this instead of just repair it. Modify it because you know like I, it has all these little spaces for lights and things like that. And I have this uh, spare Christmas light thing, the type of thing that I usually use on uh, displays and stuff like that. Blinking lights especially look really good on bases or things like of that nature. Now, in the same junk lot that I got the 1985 Snowcat, I also got parts for two Cobra vehicles, this 1983 Fang, as well as the 1985 Trouble Bubble. Now, obviously this thing is in a million pieces, so I thought this would make a nice little repair video. Now, I've already done a repair video for the Fang rotor, but I thought putting one just directly back together of uh, so many pieces, which is sometimes how you find a lot of these uh, uh, Fangs. Honestly, it's not just the rotor which breaks, it's a whole bunch of other things. Uh, this particular one, I actually found with a good chunk of the uh, of the roll cage, which belongs on the uh, back thruster here. It's not perfect, but it's way, way more than what you normally find on these things. Now, last but certainly not least to me is a holy grail find for me. No, it's not Mr. T, but actually this very, very rare Canadian birthplace variant of the Canadian rock and roll file card. 
and I finally have an answer as to why it's so rare because of what's on the back of the file car, which is something I normally don't see in photographs of this very rare file card. But more on that in just a second, because you're probably wondering, what do you mean by Canadian um, birthplace? Now, in 1982 and 1983, the Canadian releases of G.I. Joe's, very few of the figures actually had their birthplaces changed from the U.S., which was pretty much a, a standard throughout the uh, whole Canadian release of the line. But some of them, very few of them in 1983 and 1982 and 83, they had their birthplaces changed to Canadian places. Uh, Scarlet, Grunt, Steeler, uh, Airborne, and Snowjob were at least five of them. And one of them was sometimes rock and roll. But most of the time, his birthplace would still be Malibu, California. Very rarely would it pop up as Ottawa, Ontario. And I finally understand why, because, well, it's blank at the back, meaning that this was a Sears catalog exclusive. That's why it's so rare. All the other ones which still maintain the, the U.S. version of Malibu, California, were all from uh, retail releases on the full back card back. So that's really interesting to know. I finally got my answer, and I can finally complete my Canadian birthplace versions of all of the G.I. Joes ever released. Oh yeah, I also got a new watch. 